Hi, it's John from GadgetHelpline.com and today we're going to be talking about the Sony Xperia T, which is the new James Bond phone. It's the latest Android handset from Sony. Um, it's the follow-on from the Xperia S. It's got a few extra features on there. So, first of all, it's got a 4.55 uh, HD reality display. Uh, the handset itself, it's quite a nice little form factor here. What we've got here is we've got a scratch-proof glass directed on the front of the handset and a bordered black bezel of black plastic just around the edge of it. If you look on the back, it's got Sony's preferred little inverted curve on the side. And if you look here, what you have is you've got three dedicated buttons on the handset as well. So you've got your camera key, your volume rocker, and then natural power key there. Additionally, just above from that, you've got your memory card and SIM card slot. So it takes a micro SD card and it takes a micro SIM card. There's no other battery port on there, so you can't take out the battery in any other way. Top of the phone, you've got your 3.5 headphone millimeter jack. And then what you have on the back is the massive 13, point, uh, 13 megapixel camera with its LED flash. So your speaker on there and the Xperia logo. On the left hand side you've got a micro SD part card port. And then down the bottom you have nothing except for the microphone. So that's the actual Xperia handset. Inside of it it's got 16 gigabytes of internal memory and features like DLNA and uh, NFC connectivity. Let's just get it all running. First of all, we'll have a quick look at the actual screen on here. It's running off of uh, Sony's Bravia engine, which actually offers a really great PPI on the handset, which is 323 PPI. Now, the iPhone's Retina display is 326 PPI, so you know, just to bring that into, into focus there, what you actually get. Uh, it also is powered by a HD reality display, and it is one of the big selling features of the Xperia T, is the actual great display on the handset. Uh, what you may also see on here is that you've got the back, home and multitasking buttons that are actually built into the screen of the handset. So on the front of the device you don't actually have any buttons, just the three on the side. We will just make one note that we found the three buttons on the side, lower down on the handset, a little bit annoying to use, especially the power on and off button, because sometimes you have to tilt it up to actually move the handset about and you could drop it quite a bit. Again, the handset itself actually runs off the Android Ice Cream Sandwich operating system. Uh, Sony has promised that the Jelly Bean will actually be coming to the handset, and they did promise that when the handset was released, but there's still currently no news on when this will actually be coming to it. What you do get with the Ice Cream Sandwich software on the Sony Xperia T is a lot of customised Android uh, ICS apps and um, Timescape applications on the handset, such as the Timescape feed too, so you've got a friends feed that brings up all the information about what your friends have been up to on Facebook and Twitter if you've got them linked. You also have the actual Timescape feed down here. I'm using a smaller one. Now the Timescape can link into a host of different applications such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, additionally, you can download things to some of your favorite websites such as 9gag um, and have it feed into there as well. It doesn't always connect the best. What you actually get on the handset as well as a host of Sony applications, so Sony Unlimited, for example. Now, uh, Sony Unlimited is a basically a app store. It's a, another version of the Android Play app store. Um, Essentially, you don't really need to use the actual Sony Unlimited because most of the links will just take you into the actual Android App Store. And what that will do is that you know it just link. It's another byproduct to go through to the actual de default apps that are in the App Store. What you do get though is you get access to Sony's Music Player. Now, what this is is again, it's Sony Unlimited. It's classed as it is a Spotify-like streaming service for your phone. So you get a 60-day free trial when you actually use the handset. Additionally, you can actually just go into there and just stream music direct onto your handset and just play the latest chart music, uh, albums you've probably never heard before and just information directly onto there. You also get Wise Pilot built into the handset. Now we didn't use Wise Pilot satellite navigation system very much because we prefer to use the actual Google Maps software that's built into there. Um, when we did use Wise Pilot, it's a lot slower and a lot more, um, a lot harder to actually navigate through when you're actually driving and such. On there. Well, there is quite a lot of Sony software on there that we probably could class as bloatware. It's the sort of things on there that you don't always use. And unfortunately, it does mean you can't actually remove it off of the handset because it's pre-built into it. A few nice little touches are on here, such as if you go into the task manager, what you get is you get access to these small apps. Now, what these are is a list of small apps that are easily selectable, such as a calculator, or a timer, and you've got things like a quick note system. 
It's a nice little system. It's once you get used to actually using it, you can just quickly, you know, use a calculator or, or leave a quick voice note. So it's great for people on the move. One of the biggest selling points on the Xperia T is the massive 30 megapixel camera. Now the camera itself uses Sony's Exmor R sensor, um, the same as the Xperia S, and continues to give you uh, great shots on the actual sensor. What we're going to do is just turn it on here. So we use the actual dedicated camera key at the top, press and hold it, and it'll turn the camera on. Now it does full 30 megapixel pictures, uh, but what you will notice with that is that it's in a uh, 4.3 um, resolution mode, so, so you won't actually get the widescreen photos you're used to. Change it across. But the camera itself is, is a great camera. You can press and hold to actually autofocus on there, or when you take a picture, it'll take a very quick picture and will focus it very sh um, sharply. You get your standard Sony setup system here, so you can get your pictures up straight away. And it's very detailed when you actually do take one. Um, it has a great video camera on there as well, which can record full HD 1080p video. And it's also got a front-facing camera on the device, which is 1.3 resolution for video calls. And you can also make 720p resolu resolution video calls with using the front-facing camera. Nice little feature on the handset is if you lock the screen, when you go to unlock it, you've got the unlock bar. So you can drag off the camera to the right-hand side, and it goes straight into the camera and you can take a picture of in one second of actually turning the handset on. So I'm going to talk about battery life now. Um, as you get with most Android phones with a large screen, so 4.55 inch screen and a hungry pro processor, um, you're going to have a bit of battery life issues on it. Now this has got a 1850 mAh power cell which genera generates a decent lifespan of the actual battery. Uh, using the settings tools to turn things on and off you can actually manage your handset quite well we had settings on there such as not to receive emails whilst we're in work and you know to only receive bulk emails coming through and we also turn off the wi-fi when we're away from wi-fi connectivity now what that gave us is on a standard day it gives us 24 hours um, conservative use so turning off most of your connectivity will get you about 30 hours um, but heavy use, which isn't that heavy, so use of anything like Google Maps or any of the video playback system can severely limit the actual handset, so you can only get about eight hours, hand, uh, eight hours battery life out of it. We did find that sometimes this was a little bit annoying, because what would tend to happen is you go from 40% down to 10% when you start using something like WisePilot or Google Maps, but it's something that you kind of have to get used to when you're actually using Android handsets. Additionally, as a side note, what we did find is that with the signal on the handset, we had a very, very stiff in-between, which was either you have signal on the handset or if you're in a low signal area, the Xperia T immediately just says there's no signal on the phone and you can't make any outbound calls or text messages. We don't know whether this has been anything to do with any network issues locally, but this is something that we did find with the handset. So to conclude the actual review on the handset, um, the Xperia T is not much of an upgrade from the Xperia S, so if you have got the S, we wouldn't recommend going up the, uh, the step. Obviously, it's lacking in Android Jelly Bean, and the processing is a, the processor is a little bit lacking compared to some of the other handsets on the market, such as the iPhone 5 and the Samsung Galaxy S3. Although this does show in the actual price of the handset, because you can get around £400, which is about £150 cheaper than some of those other handsets, and you can pick it up for about £25 a month on contract. Additionally, there is a uh, James Bond version of the handset. If you haven't seen Skyfall yet or don't know about it, the Xperia T is the official James Bond phone this year. Um, what you get if you purchase it from O2 as the James Bond version is you get a selection of uh, ringtones, backgrounds and uh, videos on the handset all relating to Skyfall and James Bond on there. So if you think you're a spy you might want to get that version. What we liked about the handset is the great display and the powerful camera, plus the interface is great and smooth and is very good to use. Uh, some of the things you didn't like is the lack of Jelly Bean software, the processor could have been faster and there's a few bloatware apps on there. Other than that we think it's a great handset and that's it. Check us out online at gadgethelpline.com. You can also see us at Twitter at gadget underscore helpline and you can check us out on Facebook as well. Thanks for watching.